Colin Russo back with ESPN West Palm, joined now by head basketball coach, new coach, former associate head coach over at Baylor University. Coach John Jake is joining me now. Coach, I appreciate it. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Of course. Uh, first things first, building a new team. We talked about it a little bit in the presser, but this is a brand new face, but this is the landscape of college basketball. You mentioned that the American Athletic Conference was one of the most plucked uh, conferences yeah. in college basketball. That may be almost playing behind the eight ball immediately when in terms of constructing a roster and building some sort of cohesion. How has that experience been? But also, what has that taught you coming from a Baylor, the guys that pluck to becoming the plucked? What has that experience been? Yeah. I mean, I would say you're in the profession, you just can't take things personal. And as long as you got a plan, then the rest just kind of goes away. And our plan was to find five guys that could shoot 40% from three, we did it. Find two point guards, we did that. And then we wanted five or six between 6'5 six, and 7'1 with wingspans that could really make us interchangeable and positionless. And so as long as you've got a big board and you follow your rules and you don't take things personal in the landscape, most of it kind of falls into place for you. You just got to be patient and work through your process. And of course, Dusty May going to University of Michigan, a departure there. A lot of the players, of course, uh, immediately the second a coach leaves, the phone calls start coming in and everybody from all over the country is going after them. But what has that transition been? Did you have any sort of relationship with Coach May? Did he help you through the process, give you a little lay of the land? Was there any communication at all? Or is this kind of you come in blind with your guys and then you figure it out from there? Well, we talked a few times, but I wouldn't say in any way where he necessarily gave me advice or I gave him advice. I would just say that him and his wife are great people. His wife has reached out to my wife. I think they're still texting each other. Oh, really? become basketball coaching wise friends. And I think that's really positive. Dusty did a great job here. There's, you, there's no way you can hide behind that. And I don't want to hide behind it. He's a good guy. Uh, he's a good family man. He loved this place. And it's, it's no problem that he did well here. It's one of the reasons I wanted the job. It's because it's built in such a way that they sell out here. And, and that's what I want. And uh, the best way for me to help keep this thing going was to hire Todd Abernathy mm -hmm. and to keep him here. So he's been a Final Four assistant with Dusty. He knows the lay of the land. I used an SEC coach at Ole Miss, so he's been in the Good high Good player, major. too. A oh, great player. Uh, first first or second team All-SEC the same year Ray John Rondo was in the league. Like He's been perfect for us. So, so most of my big questions go to him and our strength coach, Zane, because both were here and both stayed. Yeah. So I feel as far as what we need from the past culture we have in those two. Coach Shake is joining me now from FAU Media Day. Coach, you've had a, an extensive career in terms of, of course, at Baylor with Scott Drew, uh, at Gonzaga, director of basketball operations under Mark Few. Tommy Lloyd was on that uh, coaching staff as well. Surrounded by a lot of these guys, but more importantly, who has been to you a big mentor in terms of learning how to coach, learning to be a head coach for that sense? Of course, Scott Drew has been there. What did you learn from Mark Few and all those guys being in the room with them? and that whole that experience. Yeah, I would say before that, I coached professionally overseas and Athletes in Action did as much for me as far as what it means to be a leader uh, as anybody. And that's why we're playing in the game and Zini to open the season to honor that. And then Mark and Scott are two Hall of Famers. And Mark just won a gold medal. Mark's won a national championship. I've been to two Final Fours and two national championship games with them. Watching them is probably the greatest honor that I, I could have in this profession. And Watching sometimes is even better than listening because you see the way they do it. And they're unbelievable CEOs, the way they run the program, the way they adjust the culture and don't let it affect them. And then never sleep on the fact that both are really, really good basketball coaches. And uh, you're only as strong as who you recruit, who your staff is. And I just feel like that's probably the thing they taught me the most is to serve other people and hire the right people and not make it about me. And so I think that's what we've done and I hope that'll ring true and I trust that it will. Well, that's something that especially Coach Few at Gonzaga has made a career off of, like you said, the European influence. And uh, Gonzaga has made, or at least international, Gonzaga has made a living off of, of yep. very successful international players. Of course, the team here now, a lot of international influence. In a lot of ways, teams that have international influence, a little harder to guard. UConn is one of them, a team that like plays in a sense of a lot of ball movement, high IQ basketball, extensive offensive sets and stuff like that. Yeah. How is that, in a lot of ways, American basketball has sort of lent itself away from that. And in a lot of ways, you are bringing the guys back into a lot of fundamentals of basketball. Yeah. How has that experience been, but also how important is it to that European basketball, the FIBA? It's an exceptional league. How has that influence kind of laid off onto the team right here? I think some of it, you just go where your relationships are. And because of my time overseas, and then the time at Gonzaga, and then what we did at Baylor, 
my relationships are naturally both in the states and overseas. So you go where you can get players, and if you've got to go outside the box and travel to do it, then it's worthwhile. As far as one style being better than the other, I, I don't know that that's our ultimate goal. We're going to play a certain way, and the kids got to learn to play that way. Are there FIBA influence in that? Certainly. Is there some American influence in that? I would say for sure. But the, the key to this thing is how you play together, and you touched that on that a little bit. And maybe FIBA kids were taught that a tad better than Americans, but I don't know that that's always true. Mm -hmm. I mean, Leland uh, averaged five assists. We scrimmaged yesterday, and Ken Evans, who came from Jackson State, the SWAC player of the year, he had five assists yesterday. We've had Nico with eight, eight assists in a scrimmage already. So uh, passing is universal. I think we'll combine the two styles of play and it'll fit in just fine for two three. coach you mentioned how you kind of go where you could get players and in a lot of ways you, it's a big free agency in terms of nil and making everything work with player name likeness and of course you're playing against the big dogs of uh, recruiting at least sec unlimited resources in a lot of places yeah. what has the nil experience been for you and more importantly the things you got to jump around, dance around a little bit. How have you been able to manage that? And uh, sort of, in a lot of ways, the NIL is problematic. It's, un yeah, it's unrefined. How has that been for you? Yeah, I mean, you use some, some adjectives there like problematic and unrefined. I think all things in life are what you make of it. Sure. And you can choose to be a victim and complain about it, or you can attack it. I think we've just attacked it. Uh, this is part of our jobs. Uh, NIL is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. My first answer is I think the players deserve something. Like we built this sport on their image and likeness and they deserve some of the, the money. And if, and if you come from that place, then you're gonna be in a good place through this whole thing because you're happy to see the players be successful. Now, could we use some rules and some regulations and some guidelines around it? Yeah, certainly. But I'm not sure that NCAA is listening to me quite yet. Yeah. And so I'm gonna just take it where it's at right now and do the best we can. And that's, that's the way we've addressed it. The players deserve something. We're happy to see them successful, and we're going to attack it, not complain about it. When did you know that this is the time for me as a as a coach to start exploring opportunities? It's ready. It's the time is here to become a head coach. And uh, certain times, those coaches who are ready to take the next step sometimes can do it too early. Sometimes can do it too late. When did why why did you know that this is the time for me? This is the place for me. Yeah, I mean, you probably never really know. Some of this is just do you want the pain of never trying or the Pain of, you know, the pain of regret or the pain of what could happen if you don't win. I would much rather try than not try. Sure. And if, if you're going to leave Baylor and Gonzaga, you leave for a place where people care. This place sells out. Okay, last 31 games, I believe, is a sellout. They won 12 in a row um, at home. They're 30 and one at home, I think. Yeah. So people here care. And so I didn't just leave to take one to prove that I could do it. I waited for one where the fan base and the athletic department have proven that they can help build a winner. I mean, if you look at what Brian did, Brian White did from six years ago to now with the basketball department, the hire of Dusty, and hopefully with the hire of this staff, he's done a great job. So I didn't leave because it was the right time for me. I think I left because there was a school that had proven they could do it, and I was lucky enough to join them. Appreciate you joining us. Uh, enjoy the rest of Media Day. Best of luck this season. Thank you very much. You got it.